Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here at the Millamelia Gallery in Dubai. Now two years ago I visited the private office with the private collection of Ferraris which we're also going to go and check out again today because there are some new arrivals but you'll spot behind me here in the new gallery a collection of Porsches, Aston Martins and some other Ferraris as well as a lot of garage memorabilia which is spectacularly cool to see. We're going to go for a look around then here and over at the Ferrari collection here with the Millimedia Gallery in Dubai. Come on in then to the Millimedia Gallery. Let's go and explore, starting here with some of the cars that greet us. The Porsches from the 356 Speedster to the 918 Spider, the GT2 RS to the Carrera GT. We have some special Aston Martins and Ferraris behind, and we'll go and see the Ferraris in the private office as well. But it's not just about the fantastic cars, but also the fabulous memorabilia that lines the walls. From the dioramas with the 1 to 18 scale models, through to all of the figurines that you can see around and the artworks, a lot to take in and a lot of ideas for me as well in the future. There's actually the Bugatti Baby one from the 1920s just here with a security guard watching over as well. But let's let's take a look at the cars first, I think. Here we've got the Porsche 1960 356 Speedster Super 90, a car with quite a story behind it as well. Next to that, we go from the classic Porsche through to their hybrid hypercar, the 918 Spider. Now, this is quite a unique configuration. We've got GT Silver paintwork, but it also has the carbon fiber Targa roof panel that you can remove and stir away underneath the front bonnet and the carbon fiber wing, but isn't a Visac car. So it has the normal wheels as opposed to the Visac magnesium wheels and it doesn't have the carbon blades at the back. Quite an unusual configuration. Next to that, we have a car that I have actually seen before out and about. You will notice there's something different about this GT2 RS, namely, it doesn't have the wing. The wing is actually mounted up on the wall, which is something I would love to do with some of the parts that I have actually from my Senna as well. So this is effectively a touring GT2 RS, if we can call it that. Um, like the GT3 that launched with the 991 generation, there is no fixed wing at the rear. I'm not quite sure what that would be like to drive. Obviously changes the aero profile, lots of power, probably quite happy to be fairly playful, we could say, but what a, an unusual look, the GT2 RS without the wing. Then we come to one of my favorites, the Porsche Carrera GT, a car that sounds absolutely spectacular, manual gearbox, naturally aspirated V10. This is car number 1200 of the 1270, so quite a nice number on it as well. Again, in GT Silver, classic combination with the brown leather of the interior. If we come on through, there's a lot more to see from everything, like the amalgam models, the one to eight scale models, to all of the dioramas that line the walls from Patrick Richard, to the various figurines and pieces that come from Giuliano Porcino. There's a lot for us to take in. The dioramas continue throughout. I'm gonna pick out some of my favorites shortly to show you those as well. But here we also have two very special Aston Martins, plus four Ferraris, and we're going to see some more of the Ferraris in a moment, as I said. But we start with the Aston Martin Van Vanquish Zagato Coupe, one of 99 cars. This is actually car number three of the run, of course, with the signature double bubble roof that you find on Zagato cars. Behind that, we have the Lagonda Taraf, a very unusual car, one of 125, originally intended only for the Middle East market before they expanded it. And I have been able to experience one myself out in the USA with Dan Amai, but this in the dark blue paintwork with the light colored interior definitely looks the part. It's quite an unusual thing. Like I said, very rare to see. Then from the Ferrari front over towards this side, surrounded by banners and quotes as well from Enzo Ferrari on the wall, we have a 1970 365 GTC 2 plus 2. Next to that, we have one of the 70th anniversary cars. Ferrari celebrated their 70th anniversary in 2017 and made a very special run of cars to celebrate that, each in distinct liveries. So for example, this is one of the 70 Ferrari California Ts in the homage livery to the 250 GTO with the silver paintwork, the yellow accents, and as you can see inside, Look at that from Ferrari Taylor Made, the classic style leather with the fitted luggage sitting on the 2 plus 2, I think we can say, rear seats. We then come to a Ferrari 412, an evolution of the 365 Daytona when they went to the 400 and then the 412. This is from 1986. And then we have the 612 Scaglietti as well, which I guess we could call the precursor to the FF and then to the GTC all or so that I've enjoyed so much over the last few years. Things like the go-kart as well. But let me come and show you 
some of these dioramas because these are things right up my street. Many of you will know how much I enjoy my 1 to 18 scale models. I have replicas of many of the cars that I own in real life. In fact, most of the cars I've ever owned. But here, for example, have a look at this. The image of a workshop with the 1 to 18s of the Enzo, the LaFerrari, the F50, some of the older cars as well, even a piece of spider in there. The wheels are off to be worked on, all of the nuts and bolts that are around, all of the parts. Formula One cars, you have some more modern workshops, you have some classic style workshops with the timber frames for the Enzos here. These things are just awesome. Absolutely love these kind of pieces that we can see all around here. If we come back through, I want to pick out one just over on this wall as well that stood out to me as I was walking around. The one that we have right here with the 300 SL Roadster and the Formula One car from the Mercedes AMG Patronus team in one diorama. You've got that classic style through to the modern workshop with all of the tires. This, this is, these are really, really nice. Very, very, very nice artwork pieces. We've obviously got a few more of the Amalgam models from the Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse here, the white with the navy blue. Oh, there's a Lamborghini Urus one just there, as well as some fire extinguishers. Maybe that's appropriate. I'll leave that up to you. Over here, what else do we have from the Gilemo Fortino collection? Recognizing some shapes, Testarossa, Cobra, F1 car. Really, really fun pieces as well to have around. But not just the cars, there are also some bikes and things. I've spotted some McLaren P1 pieces just down here. Look at these. Morgans, that's quite unusual. Very nice BMW ones as well, BMW i8. But even things like some Riva yacht models all absolutely incredible. Welcome to Ferrari Paradise. No less extraordinary than the first time I was lucky to visit this amazing part of the private collection. From the cars that are here on display, we've got a Formula One car, the LaFerrari center stage, the new tailor-made piece to Spider, to some of the others that have moved around, to also all of the memorabilia that surrounds them. This place is just incredible. More amalgam model cars, the helmets, a full-size prancing horse, and Ferrari iconic Rosso Corsa paint color, the 70th anniversary limited edition celebration book on display as you arrive, a 2001 Ferrari Formula One car exhaust system, again we've got the security guard on duty, the fully signed F1 helmet, the engines, the different pieces, there's so much around here that is really and truly special. From a car perspective we've got the 550 Barquetta, the Barquetta being the limited edition version of the 550 that had a manually removable roof so effectively you would drive it always open. On the other side we have the 355 Spider, a true classic as well. Behind that the 512M, over to the left a 512BB. Sitting here in the center though the F1 car, a race suit from Michael Schumacher being worn by the mannequin. And then if we come on through right in the middle we have the LaFerrari, of course the hybrid hypercar that battled with the P1 and with the 918, Ferrari's first hybrid in that respect, 963 horsepower from the 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12 along with the electric motors, they made 499 cars, well actually they made a 500th in the end before also introducing the Aperta of which they made just over 200. Now an interesting thing talking about Apertas is that on the left we have the Pista Spider and on the right we have the Speciale Aperta and I see a few people asking about Ferrari's use of the term Aperta, the Italian word open, when do they use Aperta and when do they use Spider? Well Aperta has always referenced their limited edition models by number when they are the convertible. So in this case they had the Speciale, the Coupe, which was not a restricted by number vehicle, then they made 499 of these, the Speciale Aperta, this one in the Nero paintwork with the Tricolore stripe. So this gets the Aperta designation, whereas for the Pista, they made, well, it's still a limited edition of both Coupe and Spider, but not specifically by number. So it's the Pista Spider as opposed to the Pista Aperta. But this car, tailor-made with the bespoke white and blue stripe, with the carbon fibre wheel option, and with some of the interior configuration of it as well. Then we come through to two ultimate cars, the 599 GTO in the black with the red stripe, one of 599 cars, the third Ferrari model to wear the GTO name, Gran Turismo Omologato, and a car that, well, has always been infinitely cool. And on the left of it is one of my personal favorites, as I often reference, the Ferrari SA Aperta, for which they made 80 cars originally. It's effectively the engine of the GTO, so 661 horsepower, but with the bodywork and the ride quality of a 599 GTB, but with the removable Targa roof. 
Now they did go on to make as well a small series of carbon fiber roof panels, which customers could have as well. But effectively with that in place, you're restricted, I think to about 80 miles an hour or so. But you could remove it and have the open top front mid engine V12 experience, as we now see with the 812 GTS, but are these seriously limited. In fact, they did go on to make a few more than the original 80. We believe it to be, I think about 130 in total, but a super, super rare car and something very special before another limited series Ferrari Spider, in this case the 430 Scuderia 16M, celebrating at the time the 16th Formula One World Championship for Ferrari. Again, 499 cars, super rare, super special, and you don't see very many of them around and being driven. But back here, look at all of the memorabilia, the different pieces, the different items, the parts of Formula One cars, the Ferrari posters, the pictures. That F40 sculpture is also really, really quite special as well. Almost a prancing F40, just everything that grabs my attention. We've got different parts as well. Is that a 355 maybe rear section, a nose cone up that way? This is truly, truly spectacular. Just breathtaking to behold all of the cars and different things in here. Having come back over to this side of the gallery, one thing I hadn't realized earlier about this go-kart is that it is the new Charles Leclerc go-kart, a special edition that they've made. In fact, limited edition for the Middle East. It wears his logo. There are 16 of them, Charles's racing number, in each of four different sizes. This is the senior kart, one exclusive thing to have in the collections. It's actually recently arrived as part of this. The car's all here on display, looking magnificent. Even things like the large Ferrari logo up there on the wall, the different banners, these are all kind of things that I'm taking inspiration from for the future in my own garage and what might eventually go on display. So much awesome stuff around to just study and explore and take in. If we come through this way, this wall features all of the Lamborghini dioramas from the Aventador, the Reventon I spot up here. Perhaps I need to think about some of these as well in mine in due course, or even these kind of broken down views of the GT3 RS 4 litre 917 down at the bottom. Very, very nice. Everywhere I look, I keep finding new and amazing things to discover. And there's also another of the 70th anniversary books just here from Mark Newson to celebrate Ferrari's anniversary. And I want to show you this because it is beautifully presented. It's a spectacular thing. The cover, like that of a V12 race engine. And then when you open it up, you see the book inside. This is number 1,917. They limited the run of these to 1,947, the same year, of course, that Ferrari were founded. And when you've opened it up, you lift out the central spine, which I'm just going to pop to the side for the moment. And then you have the book, which tells stories. It has imagery, history, all sorts of bits of information. Just such an epic thing to be part of a collection. Just need to be super careful with that. I'll pack it back up again just after. And we've got a 458 Speciale Amalgam model just up here, finished with the Ferrari door sills as well, just to add a touch of detail. From Exotto, we've got this breakdown of a Jaguar D-Type short nose. These are always fun as well, when you can see all of the different components and the various parts. Some pictures, some more dioramas, some more of the Porcino display figurines. So much stuff around, as well as the cars. There we have it for today though. I'd like to say a huge thanks to the owner of the Millimilia Gallery for displaying the cars, allowing me to come and take a look at them and to share them with you as well, including going over to see the Ferraris in the private office. What an amazing collection, what an amazing display of memorabilia as well. But that's it for this time. Do go follow the Millimilia Gallery over on Instagram. I'll pop the link down below if you'd like to see more of the different pieces that are available. But that's it for this time, guys. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.